when did that switch happen? Like you say, you watch American Idol and you're like, I love, I love that girl. What happened or was there a certain moment? I would say the switch was, was that time period. Really? Yeah. As much as it gave me, I lost a lot. Mm. The biggest criticism I had at the time was like the girls in high school. You like know, at your own high school? Well, you know, like just, just yeah. normal, like teenage stuff. And then I went on national television and I was enlightened quick. Mm-hmm. And I honestly, as confident as I was, the music thing, I was always confident, always confident on stage. The one thing that I wasn't confident with was my weight, probably starting in like eighth grade ish. Mm-hmm. Um, because I became a cheerleader and I was a softball player before that. And so I was not built the same yeah. and it started really weighing on me and I started having problems with eating disorders in middle school. Um, and then 10th grade, I go on American Idol and I was like in my very awkward, chubby face and like <laughs> things were, things were, but it wasn't worked out quite yet. <laughs> You know, <laughs> things were. It's also I was like forming. in between being a teenager and a woman. Yeah, it's like still the forming. age where you know, I was like, and people <laughs> commented a lot on my weight, which what kind of evil humans can comment on a 16 year old yeah. child is beyond me now. But as that 16 year old child, I, it got it got very bad for a while. Lord Elena, it's so great to have you on the podcast today. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. It's been a while since we've seen each other. I know. And that was in such a crazy time. When did you move here? I just, oh, now it's been about almost four months. I don't really know. Three, four months. So, Well, that's better than I thought. I thought if you've been living here for like a year. No. I was going to be very disappointed in this. No. I four months is all right. You haven't even probably unpacked everything. Everything's unpacked, but I haven't really been here. Like, it's the summer, so I've been, also I'm never here. So yeah, this is a miracle. But I, I'm so I've glad. Got a that, classic Monday move. I'm so glad that you're here. I'm so glad that I'm here. I, I love it so much. Good, how, it's the best. You've how long have you lived here for? I am on my tenth year here. Yeah, December will be ten years. And this, like, do you think this is going to be like for sure home base? Oh, I sure hope so. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure invested a whole lot in that house. Oh, I just bought. Like, <laughs> um yeah i think so okay uh, my fiance we're both from georgia um and it's a pretty easy place for all of the family to come to and it makes sense for work for both of us yeah so i think we're here to stay i hope that, that is i love i mean i've only been here four months but i'm already like okay this is the place i want to live i love it because it's only three and a half hours from my family in alabama and so we've already seen this. Roll so Tide. Much. Roll Tide. We, I remember we had that in we, common. We had that in common. We really bonded over the yes. Roll Tide. My mom, <laughs> my mom uh, loves you because you're a Roll Tide fan. Also, don't you have like some type of uh, family or something that's around from where she's from, like that Fort Payne? Yeah, my area? dad was born in Fort Payne. Okay. All of his family's from like the Fort Payne area. Okay. We I, really bonded over it. Yes. I think she may have talked to my grandma about it. At I'm one sure point. she did. <laughs> If, if if the Crimson Tide Alabama comes up, my family is like, I like you. I was like, I got my way into yes. the brown family. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to obviously talk about how your career started, how it is everyone knows who you are, and it's because of your voice. It's probably one of the most beautiful voices I've heard because you just like randomly sing all the time, and it's always just like, Please continue. You it's wouldn't like, want that if you lived with me because it never stops. I, I don't even know I do it. Like I sing all the time. I think I I talk a lot, but I think I sing more than I talk. And that is saying that something. That is saying something. <laughs> well, I love it. When did you know that you could sing? I think everybody kn- knew I could sing from the time I was like three years old. I don't ever, I don't remember that obviously, mm-hmm. but I remember being like six or seven years old and knowing that I could sing better than most people. Yeah. And then I think probably around 10 or 11, I was like, I think I might be actually pretty good at this. And then obviously. was I got- it, So it was very like natural innate ability, would oh, you yeah. say? Yeah. I didn't really have like, it wasn't like I, my parents were like, we're going to put her in singing lessons and see how she does. I just, from the time I started talking, I started singing. My mom has all these really funny stories of me being in the car seat and her like turning off the car. And I'm still singing, and they were like, what? I mean, I was in diapers singing and, like, 
So weird. It amazes me when you can see young children and they just can or like have rhythm or understand pitch and tone. It it has to be something. I mean, it's like I don't Lord know. Blessed. I don't know yeah. how that happened to me. It's like it's so weird. People ask me all the time that that same question: yeah. like, What made you want to sing? And I'm like. I literally think I was just destined to do it. I don't think that it was not, it was not a decision I made. It was like singing chose me. It was so. It's not like your parents were like, huh, we need to put Lauren in some type of activity. Yeah. Uh-huh. No. Yeah. Can they sing? Yeah. Both okay. of my parents can sing. Yeah. I mean, I come from a fairly musical family. Like my, my dad plays any instrument with strings. Pretty much my dad can pick it up and like work his way around it. But no one in my family really does music professionally or anything. Yeah. Um, but we we throw down on some karaoke nights. I bet. Yeah, we were the queen and kings of karaoke in Rossville, Georgia. We pretty much dominated. So where did every you Wednesday go to, night? Yeah, where where was that? Where was the? <laughs> there karaoke? was a place in um, my hometown called Magoo's, and honestly, I learned how to perform in front of people there and at church. Those are the two places I really learned to. Magoo's? <laughs> it's called is Magoo's. It, it's it's still shut there? down oh, now. Magoo's. I know we need to open that yeah. sucker back up. They, they discovered me. Hey, um, <laughs> maybe you can talk to him about it. <laughs> I sang there every Wednesday night from six to nine and saved up my tips so that I could play sports because when I was like 12, 11 or 12, um, Came from very humble beginnings. Same girl. And my family was like, yeah, you can do whatever you want. And then they were like, get a job. And I was like, all right, what am I good at? And I started singing for tips. And I have some crazy, funny stories from that time of my life. And I learned a lot. And uh, they gave me a little cordless mic. And people be eating their dinner. And I'm walking around singing to no. them. At the- oh, yeah. And you going up and like getting. Oh, yeah. And I would like wear costumes. I was very serious. And this is at what age? Uh, like 11 and 12 I'm just like popping around the restaurant singing to people I'd carry the little bucket and make them give me money I had no shame I love I didn't that. start acting like this yesterday <laughs> <laughs> I have always been this human <laughs> I was gonna ask like where do you feel that confidence comes from because you can like light up a room but there has that has to come from something do you remember somebody saying something to you when you were younger about like how you were a star or like singing. Yeah, like everybody. Yeah. My whole childhood. Yeah. Like, I, I think I just had a very supportive family. Mm-hmm. I think they realized pretty early on that I did, I, the Lord did give me a gift that a lot of people don't get mm-hmm. blessed with. And I think because we were from a small town, like working class people, they were like, you can be whatever you want to be if you work hard enough. And uh, that's what I wanted to be. And that's what you did. They said, you're either going to have to be smart enough to pay with for college with your grades or be good enough at something else. And I was like, <laughs> I'm almost saying. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So who inspired you to really go into like making music a career? Who? That's a good question. I, there were a few people kind of along the way that really inspired me. Um, I think my parents mostly really mm-hmm. pushed it for me because I'm very fortunate to have parents that were like, if that's what you want to do, we'll do it. And because my dad, my dad grew up dreaming of playing at the Grand Ole Opry. So I have this really strong affection for the Grand Ole Opry because he played banjo growing up. And obviously that didn't work out for him. Mm-hmm. He's played now. You're Has welcome, he played dad. Grand Opry He's with played you? with me. Yeah, a couple of times. Oh um, my gosh, that's so special that you made that happen. You know, I'm very fortunate that I could do that. It was pretty, the, every time is special, but that was like mm-hmm. a really special one. Um, but so I would say my parents and then just like, I was a huge American Idol fan and I would watch these like small town girls like Carrie Underwood. I remember being like, look at her. She's just like a small town girl and made it happen and I started telling people from the age of six that I was going to be on American Idol. I'm not kidding. Like, I told everybody that would listen to me, you better vote for me someday. I'm going to be on American Idol. I was like, getting them votes racked up. <laughs> You're like, an early age. <laughs> that was not something I just like on a whim was like, oh, I think I'll try it for American Idol. I told people, and I bet there are people running around like that little girl. At the, uh, we went on family vacation with my grandparents every year. They took our, um, us on vacation. And I would sing by the pool and like tell people, now I'm going to be on American Idol someday. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Hey, you made so, it happen. That so is, funny. Because I was going to ask you about 
like you, how old were you when you auditioned? 15 or 16? I was 15. Yeah. And I feel like. <laughs> so crazy. That's crazy. When I talk to 15 year olds now. That you were on national television, television <laughs> singing for millions and of people. And owning it. I look back at that time. I'm like, I love that girl. I yeah. mean, thank God for her. She's like in her rhinestone flip flops, just walked right out there in her scrunched up hair. What's hey. up, everybody? <laughs> I, I, I'm, like, I, I, I'm like every day trying to be as confident as 15 year old me. Isn't every that day. So crazy. Like, <laughs> I feel like I was, I had, well, I had moments in my life. I feel like sometimes I could get shy, but it was over like little comments. That's what I was asking you about. Like, was there a comment or somebody that really like helped you know to like helped you be so confident? Because I think there's little things people can say that can really just like make you go one way or the other. And there were moments in my life that I feel like I was super like, oh, I know I'm going to be famous one day. I don't know how. I don't, I can't sing and I can kind of dance, but I don't think it's Kind of dance? Well, get out of here. I'm going to walk out. <laughs> no. You know how hard I had to work to compete against you every week? I'm going to fight you right now. <laughs> oh, my Lord. But you know why I think that is because of what some uh, somebody said to me of like, what uh, motivated you. Yeah. Right? I didn't make the dance team at one, at one point. Like, and so I think that's why. For me, like after Dancing with the Stars, I still am like, oh, yeah, but I don't know if I can dance, which is crazy, which I know is crazy. <laughs> but it's. I, I will definitively say, I know I cannot dance. Hey. But they, come bless, on. bless his heart, it pulled out some miracles. He really did. I look like I knew how you to did. dance. I was going to say, you look like you knew how to dance. <laughs> but I don't. I don't. But, well, well um, I don't know about this. I, I'm, I, do, I do understand music, so I yeah. think that helped me, but yeah. you crushed it. For real, I was. I, I every week I wish you weren't there. <laughs> I was like, I would be doing so much better if Hannah Brown was not in this competition. There's not enough room for two Southern hey, women. But you know what? There was <laughs> no, always. And then I ended up being like very thankful you were there. No, I was so <laughs> thankful you were there. But also, there was always a like, oh, is she gonna make it? She seems a little cuckoo. She might have to, <laughs> to get out. So uh, I gotta get that. Um, <laughs> but going back to. You obviously had a lot of confidence as a child and like believed in yourself. And I feel like you also, I saw some, some interview while I was like preparing for this where you said that you won a lot as a child. Do you think that also made you feel like almost like, oh, I can do anything? Yeah. And then what was it like? To not win. To not win. <laughs> the first competition, I'd make this joke a lot, but it is not a joke. The first competition I ever entered that I did not win was American Idol. So would you so say that was pretty was that hard? Are we like, oh my gosh, this is American Idol and I didn't well, win? Well it didn't feel like a loss, but it did. Yeah. I just wasn't used to it, which mm -hmm. sounds so silly, but I also was in competitions against like people in my hometown. So it was it was very different. But yeah. um I it was the best thing that ever happened to me, not winning. Why, why do you say that? Because I worked a lot harder. It hurt my feelings really bad. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, absolutely not. Like, yeah, it was very, very good for me. Very early But you on. were just like runner up too. Well, yes. Like that's, that's a pretty still, good position to end. I mean, it's as close as getting to win. But I think because it was like the first time I realized that like in the real world, you don't always win. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. you, and you don't have to always win. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's nice to win, but... That was pretty good. And I was young and I was 16. And I think it just made me hungrier for success. Um, but also it was like a huge confidence booster to, I mean, how many people try out for the show and I got second. So that was still. Yes. It wasn't like not making it at all. That would have probably deflated me quite a bit. I'm yeah. not going to lie. Um, which. So I say American Idol was the first competition I lost. They had a thing called Chattanooga Idol in Chattanooga, which I'm from very close to Chattanooga. Yes. And I got fifth place in that. And it was to try out for American Idol. And the guy that won, like you get to skip the lines. They have these little contests all over where if you win it, you don't have to wait in the line. You get to go first. They like pe take wait those people in the line. Because that, that like, line is It's like 15,000 people that you get in line You have in. to legit stand, stand in the line. line. Like you're going to a concert, except you're going to try to get a career. And so I got fifth place. I didn't even get second. I mean, I got fifth. So I was like, I don't want to do it. I'm not good enough. And my mom was like, you're doing it. We've told everybody for years you're doing it. Yeah. You're going to at least try. And if you don't make it, whatever, we'll go home. It will be fine. You're 15. And I was like, okay. So then we went and we we're in the Bridgestone. I'll never forget this. And I like 
they follow you, all, everybody in, you fill out whatever paperwork and you get a number. And I see the guy that won go audition. Yeah. And the people that get a yes go this way and the people that get a no go this way. And I just see him slowly <gasps> walking this way. And I, I'm 15. So that was like, I was like, we're going home. And I'm like sobbing hysterically in the bleachers. At because the, and the guy is, that beat you did got, not make it. Did not make it. From through the first round. And then my mom was like, you will never forgive yourself if you don't just stay and try. Like, it doesn't matter if you get a no. We will still love you. And I stayed. And can you imagine if I'd gotten up out of that seat, out of fear? No. I mean, I mean, you could also always <laughs> I do it. And that, I want to say the yeah. guy that won was very good. It's not, it's sometimes it's just about being in the right place at the right time and having the right person listening to you sing mm -hmm. right then in that moment. And I tell people that story a lot because I also auditioned for um, America's Got Talent four times and didn't make it past the first round. When you, before this? Yeah, before that. But I never even considered that a loss because I didn't make it. So I was like, yeah, it is like kind of a cattle call. It's interesting. Both of them? Are just, all of them. Yeah. All those shows. They're like. Very hard to get on. It's just the right person has to hear you saying it's not that I was the absolute best person that walked in the bridge down that day. Yeah. Because I wasn't. I'm, I mean, but the car, the, like everything just kind of lined up perfectly. I think that's so good for people to hear because I've also had like people are like, oh my gosh, you won everything. And I'm like, no, I haven't. Like I've been on a winning streak, but there's. <laughs> people I'm, always think you win. And, like people don't see the losses. All the losses. Right. It's like. Very true. I kind of what started my, I guess, career was me doing Miss Alabama and in Miss USA, did I, I didn't place at all. It took me like five years to even make top 10 in, a, in Miss Alabama. And then I won. Like I've had those also said, I think they're so important to have. Like you said, you appreciate them because then it gives you a hunger if you really want something to go back. And then when you do win, you can win like so graciously and like be humble in those positions because if you yeah if you would have never had a loss well I got pretty good at losing after that too like yeah. I had six years of just because the thing about those shows is they you know you get instant fame mm -hmm. but you don't get instant success right you have yeah. to work really hard for success especially in like the music business in Nashville people there's kind of a formula in Nashville and I went against the formula. So I, I had to work that. really yeah. hard, move to town to get friends, to meet songwriters, to get people to kind of understand what I was going to do. And I also was 16 then. So I didn't end up moving to town until I was 18, right mm -hmm. after high school. But um, I had to bust my butt. And I did have a record deal, which thank you, Jesus, for that. Mm -hmm. So I did start with like a leg up and as far as that goes. But I also had had this weird connotation in town, I think, of like being the reality girl. And so I had to work really hard to overcome that. And we had six years of just misses, man. And I was like, I had six singles go to country radio that didn't make it. And I went on great tours to start with. And then I wasn't getting any tours. And like, I had no money left. And I was like living here. And it's very expensive to live mm -hmm. here. And I had to borrow money from my manager at the time just to be able to like feed myself, which that year, that was the best year of my life and the worst. When was that? How old were you? I was 20. I was 19. Okay. 20, 19 or 20. But I wrote the album Road Less Traveled that year. Um, and it didn't come out for two more years. So it was about six years of like trying to figure things out. I think the, like my 22nd year of life of living. 22 or 23 was the year that everything changed for me. Um, and then obviously I got, I've had, I've had wonderful success, which I'm super mm -hmm. thankful for, but I would say more so than the success, which I'm super thankful for. I'm thankful for that time mm -hmm. because I became a human in that time. Um, and I understood that it's like when you're on a winning streak, which is wonderful, there are always going to be losses before and after that. And I mean, it was so wild to be so famous and people think like I was a celebrity because yep. of that show. I mean, the year I was on American Idol was like their biggest, one of their biggest years ever. It's like 32 million people watched that finale, which is wild. That's like the Super Bowl. Yeah. Um, so like everyone in there, I was in everyone's living rooms 
And then I couldn't even afford my own living room three years later. It was crazy. And um, yeah, but I, I, I worked through it and I got a lot of really amazing people in my corner mm-hmm. that believed. And um, now things are completely different. But yeah. Yeah. There, no, but no one knew that. When I wrote my book, I wrote a book and it, my, the book is like pretty much all about that. It's, mm-hmm. yeah, it's, I'm not plugging the book. I'm just saying like, oh, the, I the think book. that when I put the book out, that was the first time people were like, isn't it getting good at, at being, being you? you? Yeah. I have it, girl. Oh, yeah, girl. I got yours too. <laughs> um, I think we both sent each other our book. Yeah. It was right around the same time. Yeah. Very similar. Yeah. In the, like a few months, I yeah. think. Um, but the whole, the whole book is about like, Everybody sees this, right? Mm-hmm. This moment where we're like talking about things or I'm on stage in shiny pants and like dancing around, but people don't see when you're crying in your living room because you just got a call that the label's pulling the song from country radio and then you still get to go on stage that night and perform that song that now you're mad at. Yeah. So um, there were a lot of things like that along the way and still now, mm-hmm. like I just signed a new record deal. 12 years in, I had to pivot and make like drastic changes, um, which have been very fruitful, I will say, and yeah. very great. And my new team is amazing and I'm so proud to be with them. But that was scary to go for. I've been at the same label my whole career and it just really felt like time to make a change, which was terrifying. Yeah. And was the best decision I've ever made, arguably, um, professionally. But it's, yeah, I mean, there, there were losses there too. After yeah. we had multiple number ones, then we had some like hiccups along the yeah. way. Yeah, it's so important to talk about them because um, even for me, like people think just like you, like was on a reality TV show that millions of people watch, but that doesn't main, mean that you're instantly rich and no. um, you and, and you have your plan figured out and, and respected. Yeah, I respected think. is a great word. For um, it. Yep. And you have to really keep working and it's hard because you have this like, Built in, um, I mean, American Idol or like some of the fan base group of people that really care for you and pull for you and root for you, which is great. But then you have to, in a way, separate yourself and and make your own path because you can't just, you were on American Idol, but now it's like, okay, but I'm trying to be Lauren Elena. And that is really hard to do. And with that is going to come losses and where am I? And am I supposed to be doing this in doubt? Because and should I go back to Georgia? And should I, yeah, go to college or something? That would be tough at twenty nine. About to be twenty nine, but you know, I think about, I think about, I'm like, (laughs) what else should I do? But (laughs) should I have gotten an education? That might have been good. (laughs) But I think it's so, it's so important for people to hear that you had those moments of doubt, but then can see like how when you really care about something, you really believe in something. And really, maybe you just have the support that tells you, even when you're like, I don't know if I want to do this to keep going, that you can make those changes. You can find those other victories. But I also think it's important that we can't always be chasing those wins. I think I can really chase wins. But knowing that they're well, you're good gonna- at them. <laughs> you're running a little bit faster than everybody else. Well, it's you the baby. hills and valleys. <laughs> it's the hills and valleys that like I then I'm like, oh, I got to win. But like when's when's the the when things are going to hit the fan? When's the fail coming? Yeah. Sometimes losing is more important than winning. Yeah. And it kind of puts things into perspective. And then I was like, OK, is this actually where I want to be? Where do I want to be? Because now I'm down here and. I can't go any further, so I got to figure out which way I want to go. Going climb up. up, I know. I always when I have a real low, though, I'm like, well, the good news is, home place goes, it goes up. up or home. I yeah. got two options: <laughs> going up or I'm going home. <laughs> it's great to know home's always there, but I don't think home no, is where I, either one of us no. are supposed to be at this season. No, but we're all so obsessed with ourselves. That's mm-hmm. the thing about like being a human, is we're so caught up in ourselves and like not being good enough or whatever. That like no one else sees it that way. I yeah. look at you and I'm like, that girl is crushing it. And I'm so proud of you. And like, you, you know, probably same for me yeah. and all of our other friends. And then you like talk to them and you really connect with people and you're like, oh, we're all like, we're all feeling like, we're all going what through are we it. doing? What yeah. are we doing here? We're all making it up every day. Yeah. And that's fine. And it's great to pivot and great to quote unquote fail so that you can make changes and grow. 
Absolutely. I want to go back to after American Idol coming here to Nashville because I've always um, wondered about this because I feel like reality TV, regardless of what type of TV it on, you're on, but especially sometimes for like talent competitions in the music industry, it feels like it's an advantage, but then there also comes disadvantages in that of like how um, different people respect the community, the community of people think you know, you weren't in the honky tonks with us doing this whole thing. Did you ever have to do that? And then, yeah, what was your relationship like building community in this town, being respected after American Idol, where seemingly everybody else thinks, oh, she's made it? What were those few years after that like? Ooh, yeah, I did feel a little bit of a disconnect to the community at first. Mm -hmm. I don't feel that way at all anymore. It seems like it's changed a little bit because. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, I had to come in and like meet people and work with people. And and really the thing that I feel like I worked the hardest at proving was my songwriting. Mm -hmm. And that's a really good way to work yourself into this community because it is such a songwriting community. And I always say that songwriting is like tennis. If you play with people that are better than you, your game improves. And mm -hmm. so I worked with everyone that would say yes for years and years and years. And and in their defense, um, they were right. I had not earned it. And like, I had not come to this town and, and proven myself. And honestly, I was not a great songwriter when I moved to town. Like, I wasn't. Um, Did you think you were I was were also then? 16. You're 16, yeah. So I hadn't like really designed my craft or, and like honed in on what I wanted to say. And I was like not even a human really yet. Yeah. 16 is a tough Still age. A baby. Very impressionable age. Yeah. Which served me well because I spent, you know, five or six years working with the best of the best and creating relationships with these people. And now I would say I'm a great songwriter, but um, it, it, you know, my path was very different than a lot of people's paths, but I feel like I still did move to town improve myself to the community. I just also had this extremely large fan base waiting yeah. for something to happen. Um, so that was a blessing. But I don't think you make it in Nashville without that. That's not going to happen. Without? Without, like, coming into town hustling. and proving yourself to the community. Yeah. And, and really building a village of people that design your artistry and help you with that. So I did do that. I just did everything a little out of order. Yeah. Um. But I don't, you know, one of the most rewarding moments in my career was when I won the ACM mm -hmm. because I knew that my community, that's a, that's a community-based, like, voted thing. And so that meant the people in Nashville, Tennessee, picked me as the breakout female artist that year. So that was a nice little nod to know that finally, you know, I'd been in town for years at that point. I mean, that was... 2018, 2019, and I was on Idol in 2010, 2011. Wow. So I auditioned in 2010, finale was 2011. So that was a long time to be in town. Mm -hmm. You know, nobody gets a free ride, you no, know, in anything. No, nothing. And I always say, nothing's ever free. Mm -mm. There ain't nothing, nothing free. free. <laughs> nothing's free. <laughs> no. People send you free stuff, but that is not earn it. Yeah. <laughs> It's you might not be paying for it, but you're paying for it. You're paying for it. And they're like, Which is yeah, fine, but it's great. I'm, I'm thankful for the hey, free clothes. Y'all send me anything you want. Yeah. I will. <laughs> we will take it. <laughs> did you feel that pressure to have to prove yourself? Did you know that like coming in at 16 that you had to prove yourself? I don't think I understood yeah. really for a couple of years. Yeah. Because I was 16. I 16. thought I was the bomb. Yeah. And then I was like very. You're like, wait, like, you didn't oh, like wait, my song? I don't song? know what I'm doing at all. You don't like my song? <laughs> I was a great performer. I was always yeah. an excellent performer. Um, but I didn't know what I wanted to say as an artist mm -hmm. at all. Like, even I couldn't, you know, it's a, it's a brand. I'm a brand. Mm -hmm. Just so funny. You're, you're I'm a brand. brand. Yeah. It's like, we're a brand. Uh, <laughs> ding. Um, but it's, it, you know, I think probably about three years in, I started realizing, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. And I really need to figure out what we need to say here and what yeah. we need to do. And I would say now, I have a very clear vision of what I want to do, which it's always growing and ever changing. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> it took me, I don't think it, to answer your question, no, I did not realize it first. Yeah. But I was woken up very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> With American Idol, do you feel like 
obviously the fan base is there that supports you, but you're 16 years old. You have millions of people that have watched you now, and now you're off the show. How does American Idol like support that? Or maybe they've changed now, but how did they support you in that? Because that's a lot. I mean, your life just immediately changed, but now you have to do the work, but now you're moving to a new town and you're like, I want to get in this music business. Do you feel like they helped? Do they help foster that? Or is that something you almost have to push against? A little bit of both, okay. probably. I don't know now. Um, also, I'm a very unique example because I did country music and Idol's based out of LA. Okay. So I think there were a ton of conversations begging me to do pop music, which if you spend five minutes with me, I mean, I probably could have done it because yeah. I, I have a big voice, which is like a, yes. a big pop thing. But, but you are a country girl. Oh my Lord. I would not last five minutes in LA. I just. I've lived there a couple times yeah. for different reasons, and I, I'm much happier in Nashville. Yeah. Um, but th so when I first came off of Idol, they helped facilitate the record deal. So okay. that's very great. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and I got management through them at first, which ended up not being where I landed. Mm -hmm. But um, I would say, yes, they were very supportive as far as like, figuring out what next steps were and, and like getting my publishing deal and my record deal and all of those things. I did feel supported in okay. that. Um, but then I got, when I, once I got to Nashville, I think I, I had a whole, all new people to deal yeah. with. Um, and then they kind of became my family. Yeah. You know? I just, I, I asked that because I love American Idol. We went and watched American Idol um, this year. I'm obsessed with Lionel Richie. Oh, uh, who's, who is it? And he's an Alabama guy. I'm like upset. I just love him. Um, and it's interesting to see how like some people who win or, you know, get up there at the top, they have huge careers. But then there's other people that like everyone's obsessed with on the show and then they don't. And I just didn't know if there was something on the back end that sometimes makes it hard. Um, or people just don't get right to where, like you said, I guess it's just right place, right time. Um, but it just, it seems like, I can't put my finger on why some people win the show have great careers. Some people like are only in top 24 and then they're like superstars are people who. Well, like Jennifer Hudson's a great example. Yeah. Of that. What did she, she got like 10th place or something. I don't know for sure. If that's yeah, true. I think she, she definitely was in the top 10, but did not win. Yeah. And I don't know who won that year. That's the thing. Um, you don't even know who won that year, but you know that Jennifer Hudson was on the season. Yeah. I, um, I don't know yeah. the answer to that. Genuinely. I think for me, the most beneficial thing I had going for me was my age. I was going to ask you, do you because feel like you would have Because I think some people it? that are on those shows have families and like, you know, children and mortgages and they're 26, 27. I was 16. I was a sophomore in high school. I could, I could take a minute to like not make real money. Yeah. Um, but, but that's. But what, I don't even know. I don't know that yeah. it's like, that there are way more talented people that have been on American Idol than me that have not been able to create and a have career. the success that yeah. I've been able. So it is really interesting, that whole thing. I don't know. It's like why some people on The Bachelor or The Bachelorette yeah. and people love them at the time, but then you don't, you kind of forget about them. Yeah. And then there's people like you that build an entire career. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I, don't I can't that. answer that. I, it is fascinating. It's fascinating, though. though. I think that's what makes well, me. Well, I'm just impactful. I'm me too. <laughs> Good Lord. I I'm lie still about like that. I'm like, <laughs> proud of that. You still like me? We're still here. Good. Everybody's okay. still coming <laughs> to the shows. Are we friends? <laughs> um, okay. Let me. See. Okay. What was. You said you're really. Con you, you've been always confident. Do you remember like the time like not what, always not always but I think as a young child oh, yeah. like oh. you knew that yes when did very outgoing when did that switch happen like you say you watch American Idol and you're like I love I love that girl and what happened or was there a certain moment I would or say the compounded? switch was was that time period really yeah as much as it gave me I lost a lot mm. because. I'm from a town with 3,500 people. Oh, well, it's like 4,000 now. We're crushing it. I looked it up the other day. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rossville, you're crushing it. People be having babies. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the biggest criticism I had at the time was like the girls in high school. 
you like know, at your own high school. Well, you know, like just, just yeah. normal, like teenage stuff. And then I went on national television and I was enlightened quick. Mm-hmm. And I honestly, as confident as I was, the music thing, I was always confident, always confident on stage. The one thing that I wasn't confident with was my weight, like my whole life. Um, well, not my whole life, probably starting in like eighth grade ish. Mm-hmm. Um, because I became a cheerleader and I was a softball player before that. And so I was not built the same. Yeah. And it started really weighing on me. And I started having problems with eating disorders in middle school. Um, and then 10th grade, I go on American Idol. And I was like in my very awkward, chubby face. And like <laughs> things were, things were, like, it wasn't worked out quite yet. <laughs> you know, <laughs> things were it's all I was like forming. in between being a teenager and a woman. Yeah, That's you're like still forming. Age where you know, I was like, you know, um, and people <laughs> you know. and people commented a lot on my weight. Which, what kind of evil humans can comment on a 16 year old yeah. child is beyond me now. But as that 16 year old child, I, it got it got very bad for a while. Mm-hmm. I mean. I suffered with such a severe eating disorder and those years where nothing was connecting. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't only because of like me needing to work hard. I lost who I was completely. And I think my light, like the, it was dimmed quite a bit mm-hmm. because of the TV aspect, which I'm sure you can totally relate to. Oh yeah. I, I do not read any comments now. Like, yeah. Unless my team like tells me this, this TikTok did really great and you should go like interact with people and like, yeah, whatever. I do read comments. <laughs> but I'm in a phase right now where things are very positive. Yes. But when things aren't, I, I like to stay away from it. Um, but there was like, I remember one specific thing that really did it. Um, there was this website, like a blog, that, like blogs were really yeah. thriving at the time. And they still are, I think. But it was like a new thing. No, but it was like a big then. thing. It was like almost like what was right before Instagram. Yes, or like that's yeah. how people got Instagram. Twitter famous. had just become a thing the year I was on Idol. Like they signed us all up for Twitter to help promote the app. Oh wow. That year. So that was it. so that was good for you there probably. Was that, there that. was Facebook. Yeah. Facebook was established, but Twitter was new. There was no such thing as Instagram or TikTok or any of that stuff. Which y'all, I didn't even have a phone. They had to teach me all kinds <laughs> of stuff. I was like, where am I? Um but there was like a blog that every performance I had, they like photoshopped a pig nose onto me and they only referred to me as Miss Piggy. And like, I didn't, I, the internet was not so well understood then either. Mm-hmm. But it was, it was not understood that there, it was a scary place, you know? Yeah. Especially for me. I'm like, everybody loves me. I'm yeah. like, dude, it's so great on the show. And so it was like an extreme high and an extreme low. And I got sick, like very, I struggled very, very bad with bulimia for a really long time. Um, In fact, when I was going on Dance with the Stars, I had been in like complete remission for years at that point. And something about knowing I was going back on national television, I had to start going to therapy for it again. Oh, it's Um, like sense of chill because like. I was not well before I went out there. And then, dang, I mean, the fastest way to lose weight is dancing 10 yeah. hours a day. But it was such a, it, the, the, the weight thing has always been a thing for me. I still, though, was the most confident person of all time on stage, which tells you that you just really don't know what people are going yeah. through. Because at some point, like, my mom took me to the doctor and talked to the doctor in the hallway and said, my daughter, I was like, I was probably 50 pounds smaller than I am right now. Not that much. 40. Every bit of 40 pounds. I was not well. Like, I didn't look like myself, which the career wasn't doing super well. Mm -hmm. Um, So people didn't really see me in that time either. I wasn't very, like, in front of people. But I would still, when I was in a room full of people, be the most confident person in the room. Even then. You could just switch it on. Yeah. Pretty wild. But that's that was the time where the confidence kind of idol in about four or five years after that were pretty Mm -hmm. rough but then you know now I'm doing great I'm very happy very healthy yeah so uh I want to you said that it started in middle school how did that what does that look like when an eating disorder starts like how was very sad but Mm -hmm. I was in health class and they showed a video of a very thin girl struggling with bulimia and it was to teach you not to do it but it like, I thought, oh, 
That's how you get small. Yeah. That's, that girl's so thin, which is so sad. I talk about that in the book too, but it like get planted the idea for me. And I just occasionally, like if I felt like I ate too much, I would purge. And then over time, I mean, there was like a three year span where everything. Every day. I was purged every day. Yeah. Wow. And I got very sick. Like when my hair fell out, it was not a good mm-hmm. time. Um, I... I haven't really shared that. I've, I've talked about how I've definitely had disordered eating or like seen my body, like body dysmorphia for sure. But I also, as like a middle schooler, high school, I would have people always make comments about my weight being like, oh, if you just lose 10 pounds, you would be like perfect. Especially probably if you're doing the pageant thing. I'm doing the pageant I thing. I applaud you for being well, able to handle that. I didn't. Pressure I didn't handle it very well. Um, and I remember like hearing about like anorexia and bulimia and being like, Hmm, well, maybe I can try that. But I, it's, it is more of a disorder in your head. Cause I, I couldn't, I couldn't do it, but I was mad at myself that I couldn't do it. Yeah. I it's so messed up that I'm like, why can't I, why doesn't that work for why me? Why doesn't that work yeah. for me? Well, thank, thank God. Thank God. Yeah. But it also I think, but you had every bit of an eating disorder without figuring without out the, ha, that ha, working that part. for you. For sure, you're even thinking, thinking that, that way. is not a normal way to think. No, that's just it's just not a. But I was it was not also normal, in, healthy. It's but not it a in, healthy way to think. It was encouraged. It was an encouraged way to think, and I think yeah. that's a lot yeah, of cultures. Yeah, our culture is like it made it be like, oh well, we don't do that, but you can do this and maybe only eat like fruit at this time of the day. And then just, I mean, there was a time I was eating, like I could eat fruit till like uh, 12, which meant I missed my lunch. My lunch at school was at 11. So I didn't eat lunch. So I just eat fruit. And then I would eat a piece of like five ounce chicken. Oh, and some I've been beans, there. You know, I wouldn't even eat fruit. I eat, I eat cucumbers and chicken. Well, that like, was, I was like, that's my carb. I can I only know, have the carbs. And you like read it in magazines and stuff. It's, it's like, you want to lose weight? Eat chicken and cucumbers. Yeah. Well, if you also, if you just want to like completely destroy your body and your metabolism, eat cucumbers and chicken. And that's, that's what happened. Yeah. I, I ruined my metabolism oh. by 10th, 10th grade you know doing that I would lose 15 pounds in like two weeks and I'm like oh I did it which is absolutely crazy yeah. but I think it's good to talk about because it happens so much younger it's these little things those little comments of watching a show or a health class like oh but I'm supposed to look like that 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 skinny girl is actually how they're saying all the beautiful that's what's mm-hmm. beautiful mm-hmm. so I, sh- I should do that it's really sad and being thin is really celebrated too yeah it's almost it's almost like it's too celebrated. Well, I was because gonna people were so proud of me and probably so proud of you when you lost that weight. They're right like, now, you look so good. Right now, which I've people lost don't, weight. I mean, yeah. I'm not saying no, don't compliment people because that it's not your burden to carry if someone is unhealthily a- mm-hmm. achieving that. But it is interesting when you are the person that's unhealthy and you're being complimented for it. Yes, that is a whole. Like it's a whole thing. I mean, it just adds to it. It's just interesting how much like our w- a woman's weight is just commented on in general, like constantly, constantly, especially being in the public eye. I'm out here talking about being fit. You know, like, yeah, I mean, I lo- don't y'all be calling me skinny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's if for me, it's like people be like, oh, wow, you've gained weight. Oh, wow. You've lost weight. What are you doing? And I'm like. Yeah. Then it makes me start thinking, what am I doing? Should I be doing something else? Oh, yes, you like me this yes. way, so I need to stay this way. I don't know how I got this way. Yep. It's so, it's just so important that people understand, like, yes, um, celebrate women's encourage. bodies, encourage, but there is a fine line yep. with people who have struggled of how much you comment on, and you don't even know who's struggling, too. That's the well, thing. Well, luckily, in my life, pretty much everybody knows and yeah. will check in on me and make sure I'm, you know, being healthy. And I'm just like over here. I'm like, this pizza's great. Yeah, right. But yeah. Loving the pizza. But I, I mean, everything's a fine balance. And I think if you do too much of anything, mm-hmm. it's not healthy. The yeah. moderation's good in everything that you do in life. But yeah, the whole the the whole culture of just the constant commenting and the constant feedback. Mm-hmm. I mean, people have access to us. All, and, and I'm saying us, like people. Yeah. Not just you and I. Like every, we have access to everyone at any 
time unless they've established healthy boundaries where you can't get to them if mm-hmm. you don't actually know them. Yeah. It's pretty wild. It And it's continuing to get – to become like – you. Got, I kind of thought there would be a time where like that cooled off. But I thought so too. It's not. No. It's just more and more. Yeah. Um, What made you finally – decide to get help and what would you say to somebody who's like listening to this and feeling like their whole body is getting hot and like oh my gosh I'm kind of in this situation what would you say to them as like a a first way that makes me want to cry yeah like that first way to maybe like make a step and to getting healthier and being themselves again and having that light again well I ended up getting seeking treatment mm-hmm. because um I purged for so long that it started affecting my vocal cords. And um, I think just also my body was just so tired and so beat down that it was like everything was struggling. My whole system was struggling. And the doctor looked at me and said, if, it, you know, this is, you you could, you can die from this. People die from this. I think I was just educated <laughs> very quickly. And the fear of never singing again, like kind of pushed me to yeah. that. Um, I wish I hadn't gotten to that point. So I guess my encouragement would be if you are feeling a certain way hearing it, just explore why Mm, Um, and talk to somebody about it. Because I I knew like at 13 that that was a problem. Mm -hmm. And I let it grow and let it grow. And if I just like talked to my mom or like my best friend at the time and been like, hey, I watched this video and like, can we talk about this? Mm-hmm. Because the girl was really thin. I mean, I had such a childlike way of perceiving it. Yeah. But even at 17 or 18 or 19, I still wasn't like talking to someone about it. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of power in just like admitting it. Yeah. And, like talking to anyone. And if you don't feel comfortable with people in your life, like there are online resources. So I would just encourage some. I think the first step to addressing it is just admitting it there Mm -hmm. and talking to someone about that yeah um and I would also I like it's just a journey like I I'm not a some healed professional that knows everything there is Mm -hmm. to know about eating disorders and confidence but I have had some therapy I'll Mm -hmm. tell you and I've I've changed a lot of things in my life and like I'm able it's still even scary like I, I mean I will always, that will always be a thing I struggle with. Same. Yeah. It's like my dad's a mm -hmm. recovering alcoholic. He's 10 years sober in October. Every single day he fights for that, Mm -hmm. you know, to, to make sure that he's doing what he's supposed to be doing to be the healthiest version of himself. And same for us. It's just Mm -hmm. a different obsession or addiction or whatever you want to call it. So I would just say the first thing, I mean, the first step for anyone with anything like that is just realizing that there is an issue and um an unhealthy issue and addressing it in whatever way feels comfortable i mean none of them feel super comfortable because it's very scary and very isolating and there's so much going on in here that in internally but i would just say talk to someone about it yeah reach out to someone it breeds in silence that's for sure and um i just am so thankful that you do talk about it because like you said you you don't you didn't have to i mean what was it at a point place that you were it was all yeah. in a time in your career where you didn't have to speak out about it no i i really never had this like grand plan of speaking out about it i was in new york and i had just finished up like i hadn't finished treatment but i had gone through some like serious so you therapy went to and a, i didn't i did outpatient outpatient okay but um looking back i should have done inpatient i will say Mm-hmm. But I, I'm here now. I I would have, if like, just that my, my situation was severe. Yeah. But I did it, and it just took me longer to mm-hmm. get to where I am now mm-hmm. than probably inpatient would have done. But um, I was in New York, and I was in a great place. And, uh, you know, like kind of what you said, like, I come into the room, and I command attention, and I, I was doing that, and mm-hmm. we were on, like, a Facebook Live, and it was with their, like, a magazine's audience, and a girl commented and said, I wish I had your confidence in my body and my blah, blah, and I was, like, really talking about body positivity, but I wasn't really sharing why I was talking about body p- positivity. Mm-hmm. I-, I started feeling, like, overwhelmed with, like, needing to share. Mm-hmm. 
And it was really wild. And I just came right out and said, I've struggled with bulimia for seven years of my life. And I think the, the, like everybody in the room was like, wait, like, what's <laughs> going on? And I was promoting Road Less Traveled at the time, which is what I wrote that song about. It was like not caring what, it's a very positive, uplifting, really? epic yes. song that I wrote with um, Jesse Frazier and Megan Trainer. fun fact. Um, oh, she and I so used to cool. write all the time. And, and we wrote Road Less Traveled about just like not caring what people say about your body and what you stand for and who you are. And I don't know that I fully believed it when I wrote it, but I was trying. Yeah. Drastically trying at the time. And it's really crazy that the biggest struggle I've ever had became the biggest song I've ever had. I mean, uh, the first song that really defined my career and changed mm -hmm. everything for me. So pretty wild. But yeah, I didn't have like a plan because I had been, I had obviously knew that that was what the song was about, but I had never even considered talking about it. It was such a scary foreign place yep. for me to even admit. And actually, this is pretty wild. My dad didn't know. My dad found out from that. Had he already been going through his own treatment or no? Just wondering I like at that, like. So. It's all kind of. It, it was all know. at the same. Was it kind well, of around yeah, the same time? Yeah, I guess so. No, it was a couple years after his because he's he's he will be 10 years in October okay. and this happened. Yeah, a couple years later. But like I was talking about it and my dad called me and was like, what are you talking? Like he called me so upset. He was like, I didn't know you went through this. And I was like, I'm sorry. I was so shameful that I didn't. Yeah. My mom knew. But mom traveled with me. So she's because I was touring yeah. at 17, 18, and she stayed on the road with me. And so I think she like really saw what was happening, even though I thought I was hiding it. <laughs> and um, she was a huge part of that healing process yeah. for me. She saved my life. But um, yeah, my dad didn't even know. Did not know. So and then now you've like I tell the, the whole world knows now. Yeah, but <laughs> well, you've kind of I think you've done a really great job of like continuing to talk about it. I've I've seen other places that you've talked about your recovery process and knowing it's, it is not linear. And there can be things like even doing dates with the stars that can bring up those feelings and yeah. emotions, but you have like, it's so important to have that support during those times because I mean, I immediately was like, I yeah. got to call the therapist. Yeah. I got to call her and get in there because this is not, I can't let myself get back to that place again. And, and it, and it would have happened probably mm -hmm. most likely if I had not addressed it and like, Ask for help. Yeah. But it's very easy to go, like, to just think, oh, it's just this, like, one time or it's just, and it's, yeah. Yeah. It's very crazy. Well, I, I just appreciate you. And I know a lot of people that are listening to this oh, also wow. appreciate you for that. But let's go on to how we met, which is Dancing with the Stars. What made you decide to do Dancing with the Stars in the first place? I don't know, honestly, <laughs> because it was not that thinking I was going to win it. Um, I guess because of my background with TV. Mm -hmm. I've done a lot of sh TV stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I owe my, you know, my career to TV. So anytime I can kind of super serve that and it makes sense timing wise, I love to do it. I love TV. I love Me film. too. I love being on camera and connecting with people that way. So I think it wasn't so much the dancing as much as it was just, you know, connecting with the audience again. And getting to learn a new skill and other people kind of be on that. A challenge. Yeah, yeah, it's a challenge and be on that journey with you and get to see how you <laughs> crushed it. You really did. Thank you. I, I was just unfortunate that you were there. <laughs> you know? You and a couple other people that were better than me. <laughs> oh, but you, but like you said, your stage presence and the way you can turn on this confidence is something that I really admired the whole time. Because for me, it's like I could get down the steps in but in ten seconds. <laughs> you could. You'd have your whole dance memorized. I was still learning the first five steps. For real, I'd been, I was like, you got to keep me away from her where she's learning. They're doing the full dance clip. <laughs> but I could, I, I <laughs> had that thought in my head, which is, so I know like for some people are like, oh my gosh, it's so weird that you like think you can't dance. But I was like, I could learn it. But then once I like 
went to perform or went to, I don't know, maybe like Alan being a coach was like on me. There would be like this, like these times where I I would like snap into this bad mindset of like, oh, like you can't even take a step. Like I can't dance. And sometimes that would hit when I was dancing. Sometimes it was like in the rehearsal before. And so that's why I constantly practice and like had to remind myself, okay, you can do the steps because I would start thinking like, why are you even here? Why are you doing this? Well, you, because you were so great. Well, thank well, you. Well, she talked to me at that time because I'd have been like, listen, sis, everybody here is trying to be better than you. <laughs> For but real. That was the mindset. Everybody knew you were the person they had to be. It's, Which is so interesting to probably because I was in like such a different space. Up. Yeah. 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 Now, I talk the only about- thing that I think I had, like, my strategy was, I'm a great performer. I'll just, if I do all the steps wrong, I'm going to smile through it. That's and you what did. I did every week. <laughs> I was just like the class clown, basically, of the show. But, but that's why people love I did you. do, a, I mean, I did, I did watch the dances and I think, oh, well, I you actually did, did yeah. kind of better than I thought. But it was, dancing was not my thing. Um, but can you, can but you say But performing is totally yeah. my thing. So I did, and music is my thing. So I did have some like strengths that I knew I was bringing into it, but I fall more than anyone I've ever met. <laughs> and I was every, my, my fear was I'm going to fall on TV again. Cause I fell on American Idol like bad. And so I was constantly, my fear did was Did you like, fall? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I you should remember. look that up. It's pretty good. No, on Dancing with the Stars you Oh, fell? did I? I don't think I did. Did I ever fall? No, but I did like in the middle of one of the dances, just completely forget where I was and didn't do anything right for about 15 did seconds. Just I, did, I just went, <laughs> bing, bing, bing. And then finally I remembered what I was doing. I did it three times. I did that three times. It was the, um, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Mid dance. I just forgot everything. Oh. Everything. Gleb, I know Gleb wanted, wanted to just like trip me and make me fall on the dance floor at that point because it was one of my best dances. And I got out there and just, you know, I didn't, I didn't dominate. But I smiled. But you smiled. And I, and and you, I would, ding, I would, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> it was like, what are you doing? Like, well, I'm was, performing. <laughs> <laughs> it the was show the must hound go dog on. dance. You have to go Oh, the hound dog dance. You I ain't nothing but a because- hound dog. Ding, ding, <laughs> ding. It was not, that was but not I what I remember you did so good <laughs> in, the in the rehearsal. I wish you could just fake that and, and like fake. Then re- play, it, play it. Yeah. But they make you do it live. They do. They sure do. The more you know. <laughs> um, what was your relationship like with Gleb? And like, how was that? Because like, you're very, that's like a very like intimate, like close relationship that you're having with somebody who's also like it your was, coach. It was tough. It was tough. I know. It, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Like, Gleb's a great guy. Uh-huh. It was tough. Yeah. Because it's such an interesting dynamic because dance is his life, right? Yep. And, and you really have to respect that. And I, I am, he's very serious. He's a very serious person. And I'm not. In the, dan- in the, the studio, he was serious? Just in life, I think he's very okay. serious. <laughs> He's very serious. Um, he's fun too. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. We had f- a lot of fun together when we were not rehearsing, but yeah. the rehearsals were. Oh, they're just tough. I was like, <gasps> they're kind of scary. Yeah. Because they the are accent, so scary. He had this accent that was very scary. Like when he would get upset, I was like, oh. I don't know what you're saying to me, but I feel like you're not happy with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm not doing it. Well, and I, you know. He, yeah, it was tough. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Like, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done, and the the like seriousness. Because like when I don't feel confident in something, I just make a joke. Yeah, and he didn't think it was funny yeah. ever. <laughs> so it was. We had to learn to communicate. Yeah, we had to learn. But by the end of it, I mean, like I'm so appreciative of him, and I grew so much in that time, and mm-hmm. that's because of him. But it was rough. I mean, sometimes I would just have to leave. Me too. Because of the argument. Oh, I remember you yeah. and I be in the hallway like. Wait, but like, let me, what's going on in there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But what do you feel like, what was like the best lesson from that experience that you learned from it the stars? He believed in me. Wow. Um, he was tough on me, but he really did believe I could win. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And he, it, it that was really nice to have. I mean, yeah. as, as tough as it was, I can look back on that and see that. Yeah. I don't think I really thought that at the time. And that's why he pushed you so yeah, hard. Yeah, but that's why he was pushing me because he believed in me. And that was nice. And I do think that um, all joking aside of like <laughs> when I would get there and do the dances and I was just performing, that he pushed me to do my best mm -hmm. for real. But yeah. I, without him, I would not have been that good at it. Yeah. Because it wasn't a natural thing for me. So yeah. I do appreciate that about him. And um, I also really wanted to fight hard for him because he hasn't won. Yeah. And so I was like, there was like a part of me that was, I felt that pressure too. Yeah. And went, hey, and look at yeah. you. Has he won since? Uh, no. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's a great coach. Too. Yeah. And and I do also love they're all very competitive, but they are a family, which was really Definitely. cool. And like Emma would come in and help me. And I'm still really good buds with Emma. I love and, her. Yeah. Um, Lindsay and everybody. It was just so like a, a big family. So it, I just. I wish I wasn't so crazy during that time because I even loved it, even being an absolute weirdo. But it's such a um, cool. Hey, we were all like losing it. Yeah, it was not the only person that never lost it one single time was Allie. Allie, Bray. she's so she's sweet. an angel though. So <laughs> I mean, it, that's an unattainable thing. She is just, just the kindest that. human that's ever been born. Yeah, I don't think she knows how to be upset. She, yeah, I don't. I she's never just saw so it. Sweet and kind all the time, but yeah, I learned how to be upset on. I was show. very yeah. upset. Yeah, I, I learned how. <laughs> To be upset all the time. <laughs> you are also so funny though, because it's like, why are we this upset over a dance show? Because at the end of the day, like now you're doing this and I'm back on the road. But at the time, it feels like the only thing in the world because matters. it's all you're doing all day long. Yeah. And then you got this person too who you're spending all your time with who it really does matter to them. Yeah. It is their career. So it is overwhelming. Yeah. But yeah. It was tough, but very rewarding. I would go back and do it in a heartbeat. Yeah. During Days in the Stars, I was also like going through like weird heartbreak stuff. But weren't you, or am I making that up? Oh, You had girl. just you had ended your engagement. Yeah, I had, I had an engagement like a couple of years before that. Okay. And then I had another a relationship scenario. Yes. That I lived through. But now. But now. You're engaged. Don't look at my finger now. But. We won't get them up that, that close. What would you say? Like, I feel like heartbreak like sucks so bad, but it's also one of those things. I think we like that's been the theme of this is like those moments are so like where you find yourself and what like good things always come from the pain. I really do think that like the oh, yeah. aftermath. Absolutely. What would you say to somebody who is like in that moment of heartbreak going through these relationships that are not good for you and now being on the other side? Like, what have you learned? now from being with cam that you can like look back and go huh this is what i learned from all this to get me here well i i uh i learned a whole lot about what i didn't want mm -hmm. um and i think I, I would just encourage people to i joke a lot about like everything but every relationship i ever had i took a lot of knowledge with me good and bad like what i did like about the person and what I did not, you know, what did not work for me. Mm -hmm. And it's really funny if you kind of look at all of the people I've dated. Cameron is a weird version of all of them. Like, he's very funny. He's very handsome. He works really hard. And there were things about, like, all of these people that I did appreciate and things that I didn't. But he's also very structured and kind and patient in a way that I was not familiar with. And so I just think... The wrong person is not where you want to end up. Yeah. So, like, if you got to go through a bunch of wrong people, now having the right person, I have full confidence that he is my person, which is wild because I really never had a super big goal of getting that because yeah. I worked so much and my career was like my marriage for forever. And now having him, I'm just, it's so worth the wait. You know, he's... He's awesome. He's my best friend. Um, when I go through hard times, I have a support system. And it's just, I would say if you're going through a hard time and a breakup, it's hard as it is to see. I've had my fair share of very public breakups. Mm -hmm. And um, 
he's he was worth every bit of loss I ever felt for sure. Because I, if I had not gone through all of those, I would never have gotten to him. Yeah. So it's really wild to think that like I'm thankful for some of that stuff I went through. Also, it just shapes you like heartache and loss shapes you into a stronger human. Mm -hmm. Um, but I will say I learned how to love people and how to be a good partner in all of those relationships. I learned what not to do, what is great to do and how to be supportive and when to, you know, mind your business. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think every bit of it, as hard as it is to see at the time. Now, when I was on dance with a star, let me tell you, I thought I am never getting married. I am never getting another boyfriend. I am done with this. I'm just going to work and then have a bunch of animals when I retire in like a farm or something. And then, you know, it's so wild. I had already met Cameron then. Really? I met him before I dated one of those people and did not think he was my person, did not like understand that. Like you didn't look at him romantically at all. No, I did. I mean, I went on a date with him, but I was just like, I don't know. Like it wasn't love at first sight for yeah. sure. It I mean, it was for him. <laughs> That's always good. <laughs> Sorry, Cameron. I love <laughs> you. Um, but, I mean, he chased me, literally pretty much chased me for two years mm -hmm. before I was like, all right. I'm, I, I, like, all of my friends are like, you need somebody like the Cam guy. He's funny. He goes to work every day in a suit. He's an in insurance. He, like, does not understand fame to this day. He does not. Yeah. He's like. Oh my goodness. Like somebody came up to him. I, when we got engaged, pretty much was the first time I ever posted about him. I never really shared about yeah. him. So I got myself into a lot of trouble with sharing about people that I wasn't going to end up with. And then people ask questions about it. So I was like, I'm going to be sure this time. So I had to, I had to get the ring pretty much yeah. to post about him. Um, but people like come up to him now and recognize him and he does not know what to do. It's so funny. This girl came up and goes, are you Lauren Elena's fiance? And he goes, yeah. And she goes, can I have a picture? And he goes, oh, I don't do pictures. <laughs> I don't do pictures. I'm like, he came and told me and I was like, yeah. you do do you pictures. You do pictures. You do pictures now. You do pictures. You do pictures. <laughs> Learn your smile because you're, you're doing pictures. You do pictures. I mean, I yeah. don't need him to do a meet and greet, but, but it was like a 20-year-old girl. That was just so happy. And he's like, sorry, I <laughs> Also, do if you're listening to this and you went up to him at the rum, and <laughs> I am so sorry. He would take a picture with you now. Now, yeah. He would. But it was like, you know, also, we kind of started seriously dating during COVID. Mm -hmm. So we've been together for three years now or whatever, and- he didn't understand what yeah. it's like to go places with me because we couldn't really go anywhere. Is now does he understand? Here, will you take the picture? Oh, yeah. He's a phone? great photographer. Yeah. 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 But also there's something so endearing about that because he just loves me. It's mm -hmm. not at all about the fame. It's like the exact opposite yeah. of that. But now he does really respect my work and understands the the picture part of it. That yeah. is the that was the weirdest thing for him because we would be like at dinner. And people would just come up while you're eating dinner. Yeah. And he was so thrown off by that at first. But now he does understand that, like, I would say, uh, Reba said something. When people stop asking for pictures, something's gone wrong. Ooh. So, yeah. We embrace the We're pictures. We're like, Where's when the I'm pictures? at dinner and nobody asks, I'm like, oh, oh we something's have. gone no, wrong. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> but <laughs> it is a huge part of it. But, um, yeah, he's wonderful. And he's everything I ever needed. And. I wouldn't have known even what I needed without the heartache and the yep. loss. And like, I knew I did not want a, another famous person. That yeah. was something I knew for sure. Because like, my my life is, I'm gone all the time. Yeah. So if I, you know, have another person that is also gone all the time and like with their, I just needed for me and for what I want for my life. I needed him. I needed stability. I needed someone Safety. to come home to. Yeah. yeah. Someone. And he loves his family. He's such a family guy. And he loves animals, y'all. That's uh, good. If the house caught on fire and it was me or the dogs, kiss it and send it. Tell me goodbye right now. You might as well. He's going to get our dogs out. <gasps> I'm, I better start running. That's all <laughs> I know. He loves animals. Look at Molly. She's nodding. It's true. He would get the dogs. What do you get me or the dogs? 
He loves our animals, which makes me know he'll be a great dad. Yeah, and that's what you said. And you I wanted. still have to run when we yeah. have a baby. <laughs> He's going to get the baby, which I would also at that point vote for. Yeah. And I love our animals too, but he's just such a, if if he has to nurture something, mm -hmm. he takes it very seriously, which is one of my favorite things about him. I don't know for sure that he'd get the dogs, <laughs> but probably. Yeah. I've asked him and yeah. he's like, I would never have to make that decision. I'm like, that is not the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> but he's just awesome. Yeah. And worth every loss I ever went through yeah uh, it's it's cool you saying like when we last time that we were together how you're like i am, don't want a boyfriend i'm gonna do my own thing i'm gonna be with the dogs and now you have somebody that loves the animals loves, <laughs> loves all the everything. things and yeah. loves you and supports you as like you keep accelerating in your career that's yes. all that you can ask for and i do i i definitely feel that of like Realizing what like you need, what supports you, how somebody like just cares for you and loves you and does not care about any of the other stuff and can gladly learn how to take a good picture. Like hey, that's he's on it. Yeah. He 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 knows too he gets the right angle now. Because yeah. he used to just like hold it out. Yeah, like, uh -uh, not I'm gonna like, work. This is not gonna work for me. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta talk about it. I'm, you, we, you, we gotta get you in a class or something. <laughs> but he was called me. I was the teacher. You were the teacher. <laughs> He's graduated. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I'm so happy for you in that. But I also want to talk about uh, your new music coming out. Tell me about this new EP, EP right? I yes. Don't, I don't know. I don't understand EPs, what they are. They're, They're like five like, songs. I don't either, actually. They became a thing. It's like, is it after I started? We used to just put albums out. Yeah. Now we got to like get a little preview or yeah. something. I don't know. But, but this um, is the fi like five songs out. It's is it six? six? Six. Okay. Six. And then I did I performed on The Bachelorette. Oh my gosh, you killed it. And you looked so beautiful, by Thank the way. Thank you. I wish I could have done it with you though. I know. But Charity's so sweet. She's she the was best. so sweet. I love her. I think she's an awesome bachelorette. She was so kind. I yeah. Was, yeah, she was so, so kind. Um, but anyway, so that's a seventh song, but it's not technically on the EP. Okay. So we have seven songs with my new label that are out now, but um, I've been talking a lot about it. I mean, we've talked so much about all of it, but I feel like I found my forever homes, especially with the music too, with the new <gasps> label yeah, and with Cameron. And I think the music really reflects that. But this, this is like a six song preview basically of what we're doing. And a lot of the music now is about my hometown, yeah. and like where I came from, which I think is influenced by Cameron, who's a very small town, like minded family, human that kind of helped me. Re I mean, I've reconnected. With, I, I connect with my family always, but I really have a deeper connection with them because of him. And because if we go home, a lot of our downtime we spend with my family or his family. And so the music really reflects that. Also, I'm just I'm just in a really happy place. And I think the music really reflects that. And I named the EP Unlocked because I feel like I just unlocked all of mm. these places in my, like my full self and like embrace my full self and have someone that celebrates me. <laughs> fully. Fully, yeah. So it's been really fun to create new music. And also I very intentionally went into it saying, I want to make a country record. There's nothing pop about it. I've made a lot of like pop country. Yeah. I definitely, listening to the mu new music, I can really tell and I think it's appreciated for all like true lovers of country music. I think the pop country is fun. It is so fun. It's fun and to and dance we still and get to do to. some of that during yeah. the live show. But I like said I wanted to make a record for the girl that walked into American Idol. That girl, oh, that yeah. little country girl from Rossville, Georgia. I spent so much time back home during the pandemic too because we were all just like, what are we doing mm -hmm. here? So I really spent time with my family. I spent time with Cameron and I just like got in touch with like my home self mm -hmm. you know not being on the road and i was like huh they're in a pop thing about me why am i making pop country yeah and so the music really reflects that and joey moy is my producer who is i mean he's got quite the track record if you look him up and he's just so he's next level he is next level and he has been so fun to work with as far as like sonically pushing me and making sure the music is country and He's tough on the songs, and he makes sure the songs are all good enough, and um, he's great. You have a song called Thickest Thieves with Lainey Wilson that is 
all, first of all, amazing, but I can't wait to do the TikTok dance soon. <laughs> it's it's great. It's for like the girls a female honky tonk, but don't Yes, down. it is. <laughs> Which like we definitely need it from the girl side. Well, I literally. So Lainey and I are buds. Okay, like big buds. Um, My whole family is just from her being on Yellowstone. They're just like obsessed, obsessed with, her. with it. Well, yeah. she's easy to be obsessed. Yeah, with. she and she is every bit as wonderful in real life as you want her to be. Sometimes you like hear about artists that you're like obsessed with and you don't want to meet them. If you love her, meet her. She will not let you down. Um, she's just like when I go through things in my life. Now, like artist wise, I can call her and no matter where she is, she's like the busiest person I know right now because she's crushing it. Mm -hmm. She will take time for me. She's just a good person. And we've been talking for a couple of years about doing a song together because we're known for some similar things. Your assets. Yeah, assets. <laughs> yes. Um, honest to goodness, when her butt went viral on TikTok, it was the best day of my life because we had already like decided to do Thickest Thieves, which is all no, about having no way. It was like the Lord blessed us with her butt going viral on TikTok for real. I was like, we could not tee this song up better if we like did that on purpose. Yeah. You can't like make that up. It no. was, I mean, we were like, anyway, so yeah. Um, She's so great. And then we, the dance is, people are like doing the dance like crazy. And uh, did you make up the dance? Molly and I made up the dance. My uh, Look assistant at that. tour manager. <laughs> and, uh, Heck yes. We were like, you know, we made that dance up in a Kroger parking lot in Donaldson. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like we were it should have been. like parked in a Kroger parking lot. That is where it should have been created. And we made it up in the park. People were like blowing their horn at us while we we're in the parking lot. Should have called you. You're the dancer. But I, you did Molly's a good background, job. Molly's background show choir and stuff. So she's, she crushed it. I, I can't, you know what I came up with? Gimme, gimme, gimme. I it's definitely good. came up with the claps. All right. <laughs> it, I love the claps to the back. <laughs> And you look, and I did, been, I did come up with a turning, but she pretty much came up with everything else. She had to teach me how to do kickball change. It took me a minute, about, and by 10 minutes, I mean 10 minutes. I couldn't figure out Glove how to. Glove didn't teach you how to do a kickball chain. Huh? Glove didn't teach you how to I'm do sure that. he did, but he I didn't forgot. retain any of that. You think, you, <laughs> you think I can still salsa? You are wrong. <laughs> um, but anyway, he definitely did. But uh, it's so fun, and so and it's just been a great interaction with everybody. And it's just like body positivity, which yes. you do not have to be thick to do the dance. It's just like a song about being confident in who you are, and like it's so much fun. Which you got a donk, so we um, need to do girl, the dance. Girl, I, I wore <laughs> girl. You got a you I wore made, jeans. I wore jeans. You wore the booty, didn't you? That's my girl. That's what I thought. I you, wore you, jeans. You just turned around you. and looked in the mirror to make sure the butt looked good. I did, and even when I walked in, um, <laughs> and my my boyfriend goes, "Dang, those jeans make your butt look good." I'm like, "Yep, that's what Mission I was going accomplished. for." Mission <laughs> accomplished. All right, let's do the dance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited to do the dance, and I love the song, and I love just it's it's bringing it all back around to like celebrating your body a body that you like you were, were mean to didn't love and now like loving it celebrating everybody else loving it too <laughs> <laughs> the only person i need to love it is cameron but yeah. and me that's right but <laughs> and is, everybody else who wants to <laughs> it so is kind of fun to be able song, to i would never have sang a song like that seven years ago and that's what i love the most about it because that's like my body is different, mm -hmm. not from ladies, ladies. You know, there are yeah. a lot of women that look like us, but yeah, the the like public perception of it, you know, has just been accepted in the last few years. And I just wanted to have a song to like really appreciate it and show it some love. And it's so people fun. are loving it. So I'll take it. People are loving it. It's so fun. I love that you have a TikTok dance for it. <laughs> I'm so not a TikToker like that, but hey, now I am. Now I you are. It. Now you are. Bring it on. And it helps so much. I I'm think. like doing the TikTok dance everywhere I go. I got Blake Shelton to do it. I, I have saw. no shame in the game anymore. I'm like, well, it's really great for, I mean, look at Walker Hayes. Like that is, that's what makes songs so popular and gets it stuck in your head. TikTok songs are like on a repeat in my head all day. And now on the playlist is Thick as Thieves. So. It just seems like you're in a really sweet season of life. I think I'm also like starting that season of my life oh like, i'm so happy for you, you you do that like you've done all these crazy things and you've you've had the ups and downs but it's all about like getting back to, to home and who you are and who was that girl that 
went on TV for the first time, not knowing what, what the heck she was doing and what she was in for. And like being able to celebrate that girl mm. and like champion her. Um, I definitely feel that for me as well, but I also really see that in the season that you're at, the music that you're putting out, the love that you're in and how you talk about it. So it's just, it's really cool um, to see. And I'm excited for the fans to continue to listening, listen to the music you have out now and the music to come and to be able to connect with that. Because a lot of people who have followed you, loved you because of that girl that, that walked in the door because they can relate to her. I don't her. know why I've been running from her. Yeah. So I stopped doing that. I've literally have told everybody I'm trying to be just like that girl. I mean, older, but yeah, yeah, older and wiser. But I also just like I went back and watched myself on Idol, and I had this like emotional awakening. Literally, I was just like at my house, and I was like, "Why was I so mean to her? Mm -hmm. Like she's so awesome, and I could see what people saw, you know." And I was like, "What have you been doing, beating that person up? Like we're not going to do that anymore." And obviously, I meant like cracked the code or anything yeah i also my mom brought me all of my american idol wardrobe she saved every Aww. bit of it and i like pulled my audition outfit out the other day which i cannot believe she has that you know where i got that wet seal remember wet seal <laughs> I do remember wet let's seal. all talk about wet seal i was sad when that went away i liked the wet i seal. thought when my mom let me um shop at wet seal i thought i was like well you rich it's cool but i had to try out for american <laughs> idol to get go into the wet seal but i Wear that dress and the little belt. I don't know if I have the belt, and I definitely don't have the flip flop. <laughs> but I got the dress and the little like thing. I should put that on and take a picture. You should. I'm gonna do, do that. Do it. Do it when you get home. Thought about that here. I'll tag you. In oh, it. Please do. <laughs> I'm gonna do a little side. I'm by just side. mad about the flip flops though. I can find them. They're either black flip flops with little rhinestones on They're them. They're on Amazon. Oh, they got them somewhere. <laughs> they got them somewhere. <laughs> Lauren, thank you so much for spending your time coming here today. I know you're really busy, but it means the world to me. And I'm so excited that we're both here in Nashville. And hopefully we'll get to hang out again soon. Yes, we will. Of course. Yeah.